Welcome to Ridge Life. I'm Tim, and today we're going to work on a refrigerator that is not getting down to temperature. We have these really nice Frigidaire refrigerator freezer units here. It looks like a built in, but in actuality, they're two separate units. Um, they do have grills that attach them to make them look like they're a, a single unit, but they do look like a very nice built in. The freezer is doing a really good job of keeping cold, but unfortunately our refrigerator has had some issues really since we first moved in. Shortly after we moved in, we had issues with the refrigerator keeping food cold. And we put a thermometer in there and we found out that it wasn't getting down to below 40 degrees. It was actually 50, 55 degrees uh, before the system would shut off completely, which is what made us have to get it fixed. Shortly after we moved in, we started having problems with the refrigerator section. It was not getting down to temperature. Normally, uh, your refrigerator runs you know, above freezing 32 degrees to just under 40 degrees. Um, we came home one day and it was like 50, 55 degrees in our refrigerator and the food was not cold. We had one of those home warranties from when you buy a house and uh, so we called them and they sent somebody out and uh, they said the seal around the door was bad so we changed that out. Unfortunately, changing the door seal out did not help our problem. Uh, it was like the next day the refrigerator was 50, 55 degrees and it should have been at least below 40. The home warranty people sent people out numerous times and each time they came up with something else that did not fix the problem. Then they said we needed to replace the whole unit. Of course, then we would be out some cost. That's when we took matters into our own hands. So I went through each system making sure it worked. Of course, the door seal was good. It just got replaced. I looked at the evaporative fan, the condenser fan, and how clean all of that was. I'll show you where those fans are shortly. What the issue we found out was is the coolant charge. Now these are sealed systems. You can't um, charge the system without breaking into it. Everything's soldered together and is completely sealed. So I'm going to show you a way to uh, connect into your sealed system, check the charge, and if it needs it, charge it up. You can see here on our thermometer, uh, when I first opened it up before setting up the shot here, we were just under 50 degrees. Now we should be in this blue range here for refrigeration, which again is um, uh, just above freezing and below uh, 40 degrees. Well, the first thing you want to do to see if your refrigerator is working properly is see if your fan, internal fan, is running. You should feel feel airflow coming out of the vents. Now, this this fan here is located inside the refrigerator, on a behind the front panel, and that's going to blow air across your uh, cooling coil into the uh, compartment of your refrigerator. To fix our refrigerator's cooling issue, we had to tap into the coolant system. Now, again, this is a sealed unit. So you have your compressor, your evaporative cool, your condenser cool, and all this piping. And the R134A coolant inside of it is under uh, pressure. And it's a sealed system, doesn't have any uh, uh, ports for you to charge new gas in. So what you have to do is buy a bullet piercing valve, and I'll show you how this works. This is the BPV31D, and it's a uh, just the right size for our refrigerator. They make another one that has for a, a larger diameter pipe, but for refrigerators, the BPV31D should be just fine. Inside the package, you'll see an Allen wrench to tighten, the bullet piercing valve itself, and you'll see these adapters. There's a large and a small, and that's depending on the, tight, the diameter of the pipe you have. So this does large, and then you can do the next size down and the next size down. So to install this, it's very, very simple. Again, you take off this plate and you install this on the pipe right next to your compressor. And I'll show you that here in a minute on the one I've already got installed. But I just want to go over how you uh, apply this. Um, so once you've got that off, you put it over with appropriate adapter if you need. And you tighten down this uh, plate here and that will secure and seal the bullet piercing valve onto your coolant pipe. Once you've got it on the pipe secure, you're going to use this Allen wrench to pierce the pipe. Now there's a piercing valve inside here and you're going to turn, 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 tighten it down and then it will pierce the valve and you never want to go more than two turns back out because two turns back out is fully open. Uh, anything more than that can cause the needle and the valve to unseat. So uh, one turn, two turns at the most. The connection for your coolant line is right here and this is how you're going to charge your system through the hole you've made with your bullet piercing valve. Now there's different types of adapters and assemblies for R134A. Now this one here is set up for automotive. 
The gauges are for automotive and it has a um, automotive style quick connect. This automotive style quick connect will not work on your bullet piercing valve. It is, is too big. They do make adapters for it, but instead I bought one that's specifically made for refrigerators. So this unit here has all the pressures and ranges for your uh, refrigerator cooling system. There's R10, R134A, R22, and it has your uh, pressure and PSI on the outside range. So you can really easily tell what you're uh, pressurizing your system up to. Most importantly, this unit has the proper fitting for your bullet piercing valve, and it just screws on. Once you have your refrigerator out, you wanna make sure you clean all the dust off it you can. Dust is not a friend of refrigeration systems. It uh, prevents the heat transfer and the ability of it to uh, get rid of the heat from the cooling process. We'll wipe down the back side here. Okay, then we'll take off the back plate, get our screws out. Once you have the back plate off, and make sure you don't lose your screws here, you want to wipe down all the dust that's collected on this uh, coil here. Again, there's a fan on the back side. You want to make sure that fan is running. And um, a nice damp cloth, you should be able to get in there. If you have the canned air or a um, pressed uh, compress compressor with a uh, nozzle on it, that blow it out very, very well. I'm going to come back here later and uh, get the rest of that uh, cleaned off. But I just make sure you want to know that you want to keep all of your um, coils very, very clean. So we can see here this coil, and there's a fan on the other side. You gotta make sure that fan is running, and you just want to make sure all this dust gets off there. And uh, again, uh, I'm gonna use some canned air or, and or a compressor to get that off. Another item that can go bad uh, is this uh, starting relay here. Uh, your electrical connections on the side of your com compressor, uh, and that's the relay you hear click and then your compressors kick on and off. Those relays go bad over time as well and you can get replacements of those fairly cheap. Of course you've got a fan behind this coil and you've got a fan inside that blows the cool air across the cooling coil into your refrigerator. Those, th those are all things that can go bad. Now, now if we look over here on our compressor, you can see this line comes out and this is where we connected our bullet piercing valve. See there's no normal connections on our cooling lines to check your coolant level. But right here, we can check the cor correct pressure and level uh, by installing our bullet piercing valve. And as we did, we put the, the bottom plate on, tightened up these Allen screws, and then we closed down on the uh, uh, piercing valve, and it is sealed now. And then when I go to connect, I'm going to release that. I bought this on uh, Amazon, just like I bought this gauge on Amazon and the bullet piercing valve, and I should have links to all those in the description of this video. I'm gonna take off this connection. You'll want to keep that. That keeps it clean. Now I've got a can of uh, R134A. That's my coolant for this system. And it's got, oh, it got more than enough in there. And of course I have my pressure gauge. I'll set that right over here. And then I'm going to connect to the bullet piercing valve. When you're connecting this, you want to make sure you don't cross thread. Okay, so now you can see the zero pressure here. I'm gonna open up my can of 134A slightly, and you can see the pressure goes way up instantly, okay? So now what I wanna do, uh, before I do any kind of thing with my system, I'm gonna start to release, can you hear that? And that's purging out, you see the pressure drops, and that's purging out the air and now all we have is 134A in there. And I get a nice tight seal, and you see pressure is up. So now there's no air or moisture inside that line, and I've got my can opened, so now we'll be able to charge. So I'll make sure I get this open to where I can get good flow when I need. All right, so shake that a little bit, and that will activate all that coolant inside there. Before I open and start charging gas, I wanna see what the system's running at. See, right now we're at zero, uh, PSI and again the blue inside here the smaller blue is for the 134A and it almost lines up with PSI for for this system so I'm going to uh, open my valve you're gonna I never want to open more than two turns so we're gonna go 
There's one half. Watch, nothing's happening on the gauge. There's one half. There's one turn open. There's a half a turn open. You can see we're actually in the vacuum range. Do you all notice that? They went down to the vacuum range. So there's one and a half. Okay, so we, I'm going to leave it at about one and a half, and you saw that we actually went down to the vacuum range. Open the gas line. Oh, you're starting to see it. Okay, oh, okay, that's too much. I want to fill it a rate so it keeps it just where I need it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill it at about the 12 rate. And I'll shake it a little bit, just making sure that it fills. You know, I don't want to charge too much so that I can close it down. You see how it still goes down to zero. Now, we were negative. Now we're at zero. Again, I'm going to stop about 10 or 12 PSI. I'm going to bring it up to the 20, 20, 25 range. This may take a little while to charge, but I don't like charging too quick because I may end up overcharging it. And if you shake the can, the can gets very cold. That lets you know that the, the gas is depressurizing going into the system. Again, I'm shaking it. It's getting very, very cold. Okay, so that's at the 20 PSI rate. I'm going to close it down. You can see now we're about the 5. Again, normally 5 to 7, I believe, for our system would be appropriate. I'm going to go to 10 to 12 because I know this thing leaks over time, and I'm charging it about every 6 months. Again, it's way cheaper than replacing this built-in unit, you know, refrigerator and freezer, because the new system for ours, it doesn't fit. So I can't get a replacement. I'd have to change out both units. And, uh, of course, compressor systems and piping, getting someone come in to do all these type of solder things. Um, it's just a very, very expensive. This job here, a couple dollars worth of uh, R134A and, and this charging kit keep me going for years and years and years. All right, now we are at about, oh, still a bit five. We'll bring this back up to 20, 25 or so. Oh, there it goes. And shake it a little bit. Yeah, it gets really cold when I shake it like that. And I know it's going into the system. So I, I'm actually, this, this can is at much higher pressure than the, than, the, uh, than the compressor's coolant system. So the coolant is going from high pressure area to low pressure area. Shake it a little bit. You never, yeah, shake it a little bit. And I'll valve it down again and see where we're at. All right, looks like it's right at 10. Let me close this down all the way and see if it stays at 10. All right, it's just below 10, and let's see, it's below, yeah, that's pretty good right there. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that one more time. You know, I didn't put much gas in this. This thing doesn't hold much gas at all. A case of these cans will last you years and years and years of charging your system. If you just got a small leak like this, you don't see oil, compressor oil coming out anywhere, which I've looked around, I don't see any compressor oil. Uh, so it is just a, a high side gas leak. Uh, I should keep, they'll keep this going for years and years and years. All right, let's valve it down. All right, looks like we're just above 10 there. And I'm in the good range for my uh, R120, R134A. All right, I like that. Now. Uh, we should get a really good cooling of our compressor system in our refrigerator. So now I want to close down the valve, get it sealed very, very well. You don't want this leaking and causing you another problem. All right. So I don't want to tighten that too tight to where it breaks the the gasket. That should be good right there. Yep. All right. That's good right there. Now I can close down, make sure that's closed on my can, and then I'm going to take off my hose. You should hear poof. There you go. A little bit of depressurization. Now let's put the cap back on. We'll clean this up and close the back panel. I'm feeling up here on my cold connection where it goes into goes into the refrigerator and I feel there's a little bit of oil. You all see that on my fingers? That's not just moisture um, from the... So that's oil. So we do have a leak right here and I think that's where if I ever do uh, connection, that's, that's where the leak's at. Right here inside yeah i got some oil and some uh, right there so that's where it's coming from welcome back we've had our refrigerator uh charged for a while now the door's all sealed everything's put back together and uh, this is something we haven't heard in a very very long time do y'all hear that 
not running. The refrigerator here, uh, the last few weeks or a month or so, has just been running almost constantly. Uh, and that's kind of the indication, you know, that it's getting uh, low on its coolant. Uh, again, about every six months, we've had to uh, charge this thing up. But again, just a couple ounces every six months takes about a half hour worth of work. Uh, much better than trying to replace both these units because I can't just replace one without the other or um, get someone in here for hundreds and hundreds of dollars to replace the sealed system and do all kinds of soldering and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, that can be done, but silence is golden. Let's open up and see what the temperature is. We open it up here and we are down well in the refrigeration range. So happy with that. Hope you all enjoyed watching us charge our refrigerator's coolant system. It's a real easy thing to do, just a few parts off Amazon, and you can do it yourself to keep your refrigerator lasting a long, long time. Please subscribe to Ridge Life. Hit that notification bell if you haven't already to be notified anytime a new video comes out. We do all kinds of things here on the Ridge besides home repairs and how-tos. We have chickens, bees, uh, trapping, fishing, hunting, all kinds of fun things. So until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed evening and go Ridge Life.